Hey guys, Bound to Divide here with Ableton Tips, and today I'm going to be taking you through a little remake I did of David Guetta, Art Bat, and Idris Elba's It's Ours, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with the first element, which is the lead. And the lead is made up of two layers, actually. The first one is wavetable, and the second one is analog. So here is all the MIDI for this melody. We can see here it's pretty much in B minor, and it's a very simple melody, very memorable, and also has a really nice dark vibe to it. So you can just copy down this uh, MIDI if you wanted to follow along, try and do it yourself. Um, let me take you into the sound design for the first uh, synth, which is wavetable. I'm just going to disable all the external effects, and we will just break down the synth. Okay, so this is how it sounds at the moment. So a lot of the character of the sound is actually coming from the unison mode here, which is set to noise. You'll see if I turn that off. It's pretty much just a saw wave. I've also got a um, delay on the on the group here, which is why we're hearing that delay. I'll turn that off now. Okay, so this is how it sounds. We've got two oscillators. Uh, the second one is pitched up 12 semitones. They're both saw waves. So if I turn off the second one, it's just adding a tiny bit of high end in there. I didn't turn it all the way up. Uh, but that would be a nice layer if it was uh, turned up a bit, in my opinion. Um, I think it could sound pretty cool. So yeah, we've got two saw waves, and it's a really simple patch. We got this low-pass filter set to 5.4 kilohertz, and then we're using envelope 2 here. If we just take this down to decay of 259 milliseconds, sustain of 42%, and then here in the matrix, you can click on frequency, which will enable the modulation here, this lane here, and then you can just drag this up to 53. <laughs> Then we want to enable unison mode here onto noise and set it to eight voices and the amount at 66%. Then we get this really nice um, kind of gritty detuned sound. Okay, the next thing I did was added some OTT and the OTT is really just kind of flattening out the sound and bringing up that high end quite a lot. So the time is set to 407% and the amount at 43%. And just make sure that you copy those amounts if you want to get the same sound. You'll hear that when you initially enable OTT, it sounds like this, which is just too compressed. So I'll just bring that back to this. And then we go into a convolution reverb, and that's set to bigger spaces on the cavern preset. And it's got a bit of EQ. I just took this here and took out some of that low end. And then we're taking out the sub, because we're going to have a lot of sub coming from other elements. Okay, and then you'll notice I've got a little bit of automation here. And the automation is coming from the amp release. So if you go here onto uh, the amplifier envelope, then you can go and you click on release. And what I'm doing is I'm increasing the release to four seconds at the on the last note, pretty much. And the reason for that is we want this really long tail. <laughs> Let me just turn off this auto pan quick. Yeah, we really want that tail to kind of ring out. And we can't have that release up so high over here because then it, the notes are washing over each other too much. So that's why we bring it down short over here. And then open it up. And then that uh, tail that you're hearing is done, you know, this um, kind of tremolo tail that you're hearing. Sounds like amp modulation or something. That's done with auto pan. So when you initially open up auto pan, it looks like this. You have to bring down the phase to zero. And then it just 
basically controls the volume. And if we bring up the rate really fast here to 39 hertz, then we can use this amount and kind of automate it in and it gives you that kind of brrrr kind of effect. So I faded that in and then back out again. Um, yeah, and then we've got some delay on the group. And that's just making stuff a bit wider and bouncing around a bit more. Okay, so the second layer. I'm just going to again turn off this delay so that we can hear it. This is a bit more mono, slightly more analog sounding patch, and it's coming from the analog uh, synth in Ableton. I'm just going to turn off all of the processing again. And here we're using the noise and the oscillator one. So let me just turn off the filter here and the noise. And so we're starting off basically with this first oscillator. And we've also got unison, I'll turn that off. So we've got the same MIDI, and what I'm doing here, as you might notice, is there's no MIDI on this channel. And so I'm actually running the MIDI from this channel into this channel, so that if I make any changes on this synth, you can hear it on both of them, not just the one. So it just saves time, basically. And how you do that is you go into the routing here, and so I'm taking the MIDI from to wavetable, and I'm setting it to in, so the MIDI's coming into there. If it's set to auto, you don't hear anything. Okay, so we have an amp envelope shape like this, so you can just look at these parameters. It's got a long attack, 133 milliseconds, and if you listen to the original synth, it doesn't really have like much punch to it. It's just really smooth in the beginning, so that's why the attack is so long. Decay of 109 milliseconds and sustain of around 57%. And then it's also got a long release, similar release to this one. It's, this one's 983, this one's 978. I just kind of tried to get them similar. Okay, so the next oscillator we're going to enable is the noise oscillator, and when you initially enable noise oscillator, it's going to sound like this. So you have to bring the color up all the way to make it nice and bright and hissy. And the volume's at minus 23 dB. And that's pretty much it for the noise. Then we enable this filter. The filter's set to 424, and then the envelope shape, we've got a long attack again, 85 milliseconds, and a decay of 150 milliseconds and almost no sustain, and then a long release. Okay, then we enable a unison here, and the detune is set to 38, and the amount of voices is set to four. It, I think it originally it would have been two, so you can just change that to four. <laughs> And that really adds like a lot of um, kind of darkness and eeriness to the synth. Yeah, it makes it a bit crazy. Okay, then same settings on the OTT as before. And then convolution reverb. Same settings as before. And then taking out that sub again. And then I'm just going to turn this delay back on. Okay, so running these together. We get a pretty big synth. Okay, the next synth is this kind of typical, I don't know, dub delayed chord pluck. And the key here is ready to just make a minor third, and that's, we're using B over here. So if you're in B, a B minor third would be uh, this D note. And so that's the MIDI that you need. It sounds like this. It's a really simple sound to make. Let me just turn off the reverb and delay. So here we don't have any unison or anything. It's all really in the filtering. We've just got one oscillator. So it's just a saw wave. And you'll see here we've got this filter and the filter's doing most of the work. The amp envelope is a bit shorter, so decays at 129, sustain at minus 33. And then, yeah, the magic is in the second envelope. So if we turn this filter on, you'll see it's set to PRD, which is like your emulation of the Moog ladder filter, and it's got high resonance of 62%. The frequency is at 130 hertz. And now if you click on the th frequency and go into the matrix, we can use the filter one, we can use envelope two to modulate the filter frequency. All you have to do is click here and drag this up to 33. And that resonance gives it all that character. 
I think I had it at, yeah, around 62. Okay, then we've got the delay, which delays it on, uh, on the 3 sixteenths. And then this EQH just taking out a bit of uh, around 1k. It just softens it a bit. And then we've got a big reverb on there, a three second reverb, 41% uh, dry wet and size at 89%. And that, yeah, that adds a lot of um, character to this loop, in my opinion. Okay, then we've got this re-space. And this is really just for the mid-range. You'll see here we're taking out a lot of the sub again, because the sub is actually, well, from what I can tell, it's actually more like a, a reverby kind of rumble uh, that the techno guys like to make. And I am by no means an expert at that, so I kind of just figured it out on my own. Uh, but we'll get we'll get back into that later. Let's just look at this re-space. So I'm just going to turn off all the processing here. Okay, so here we're using one oscillator, and um, it sounds like this. So it's basically like a triangle slash saw shape. It's got a filter on it. So there's PID filter, and I brought that down to 191 hertz with a resonance of 23. There's no uh, modulation happening here. Um, so you can just copy this amp shape. So sustain at minus 6, decay at 600. And then the unison is set to classic. And the detune amount is at 33%. So now we've got this wide Reese bass, but it's kind of um, the, the Reese that I could hear in the original was sounded more like a classic Reese. And so what we want to do is saturate it and make it mono. So first thing I'm going to do is take out the sub. So we are going to be making a separate sub. And then we're going to take this utility and make it mono. And now that's starting to sound a lot more like classic old school Reese. Then we've got the saturator. And you can hear it's got like a bit of a mid-range um, like pulsating happening. This whoop, whoop, whoop. And so I just wanted to get rid of that and filter that out a bit. So I use this EQ8 to get rid of that. It's still there, but not very obviously. Um, so yeah, that's the re-space, and that's just playing that B note again. And um, yeah, the next up is this kick rumble. So this is basically our sub. And what I did for that was I just pitched this kick drum that I'm using, which is from the D Premium Volume 6, uh, Deep Kick 25. I pitched it into B, or as close to B as possible as I could. And I basically just did that visually just by looking at um, like a, a span, which is Voxenjo span. Um, so I'll show you that. Um, so if we just drag span onto here and let me turn off all this other processing. We can, uh, you can download this for free, just Google it, Voxenjo span. And if you go to this presets here and go into session bank, then low frequency inspection, you can see the uh, this peak here is setting at B now. Originally this kick drum, oh, I thought I pitched it up. Oh yes, I did. I pitched it up using the MIDI here. So instead of putting it on C3, I put it at E, which is up one, two, three, four. So basically plus four semitones on this kick to get it into B. And that's because, you know, we're using it as a sub, the, it needs to feel kind of in key. Okay, then I got a bit of uh, EQ on here to really bring out that sub. And then delay. And that delay is set to one over here and uh, dry weight's at 26%. And then we've got this reverb on here, which is set to 62%. And um, it's a really long 16 second reverb. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just a simple Ableton reverb. Then the utility, bringing down the width to zero. You could also just click mono. And then we got this, I think I was supposed to do this. I don't know, maybe, yeah, anyway, 
you could set this reverb to 100%, but it obviously sounded good to my ears. <laughs> I left it at 62. And then I'm taking this EQ8 and doing a really harsh cut at like 100 hertz, because I just really want that subby rumble. And then side chaining it to the kick. And the side chain was clicking a bit, so I would put the look ahead 10, 10 milliseconds and um, the attack at 10 milliseconds. It's also got an EQ on it so that I have a really sharp point to uh, side chain to. You'll see like the the shape of this is really sharp uh, as opposed to opening this up getting this really deep long side chain. This just helps make it a bit shorter and you can control the length of it then using the release if you wanted a longer side chain. Um, yeah so that's just how I set up my side chain. Okay, then um, we've got this impact, which is from one of the uh, PML packs. I'm not really sure. I think I just typed in impact here. Yeah, uh, under PML Melodic Techno Volume 1 Samples and Loops, uh, it's Riser 12, this one. And so I just took it and shortened it to this point. And it sounded great, so yeah. All right, um, and then we've got the kick drum, and this kick drum is the same kick from the kick rumble. Uh, also pitched up again for semitones, and no other processing other than this EQ. So we're really bringing out that sub, because once you pitch that kick up, uh, it loses a lot of its sub power. So if you listen to this, you get a lot of that sub back, a lot of that power in the, in the sub region. So that together with the rumble, and the Reese, we're getting quite a full low end. Okay, next up is the hat, and we've got this EQ on the on the group, so I'm just going to turn that off. And we've got three different layers here. One is the sixteenth hat, and that's from Deep Premium Volume Six again. That's the name hat loop 36, and I had no processing or pitching or anything to that. It just sounded good right out the box. Second layer is this one, which almost feels like a bit more of a acoustic kind of hat sound. And uh, that's hat loop 14, no processing on that either. Together they sound nice. And then I had a ride that kind of ties it all together. And that's a really um, acoustic sounding ride. That's um, ITS Ride 002 from Deep Premium Volume 6. And that has no processing on it. I just loaded it straight into a sampler and put it on the quarter notes, just like the kick drum. But when you layer them all together, you get a really nice sounding loop. And the key here is to take out all of that mid-range to make room for these huge synths. Okay, and then if we add everything back together, kick drum, rumble, Reese, pluck, and finally the lead. It sounds really good all together. Uh, last but not least is uh, a little bit of mastering just to push up the loudness. There's nothing else on my mastering chain. Just a saturator with the soft clipping turned on and the drive set to 4 dB. So without it, it's just a bit quieter. This turns it up. Okay. Yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you want to grab Deep Premium Volume 6, it's uh, linked below. That's where most of the sounds from this project come from. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around in the next tutorial. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production Program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed, from an empty file to professional production, as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening, and now let's get back to your tutorial.